Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Mission South begins. He is on a two-day visit to Kerala where he'll announce several projects earlier. He also offered prayers in the Veerbhadra Temple in Andhra Pradesh's Lepakshi. Congress leader Rahul Gandhi says the Ram Temple Pran Pratishtha ceremony on the 22nd of January is a political event designed by the RSS and BJP and centered around Prime Minister Modi. Even religious authorities are saying the same. He said today the BJP has hit back saying Rahul lives in Lala world. The government has announced new rules over flight delays, war rooms in six metro airports. The aviation ministry has also issued notices to Indigo and Mumbai airport after passengers were seen sitting and eating on the tarmac. A 10th cheetah, Shorya, has died at the Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh. The cause of the death will be known after post-mortem, say officials, but another setback for the ambitious cheetah project. Hello everybody, you're watching NDTV. Donald Trump secured a resounding win in the first 2024 Republican presidential contest in Iowa on Monday, asserting his command over the party despite facing many criminal charges as he seeks an election rematch with President Joe Biden. Now, Trump took over half the votes, propelling him towards what looks set to be a close and bitter election campaign against Biden, a Democrat, in November. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis finished well behind Trump in second place in Iowa, edging out the former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley. Americans head to polls later this year in what is expected to be a closely watched presidential election. Let me go across uh, to Raymond Vickery, former U.S. Assistant uh, Secretary of Commerce and also Namrata Brar, who's been tracking this uh, for us. So, Namrata... Uh, you know, this, this unusual caucus at Iowa and primaries do play an outsized uh, role in U.S. elections. Tell us, what does uh, Trump's dominant lead over others signify and does this strengthen his case that his nomination now seems to be a foregone conclusion? Yes, I think the core message that is coming out from these results that we witnessed here last night is that no one can out-Trump Trump. And I think that it is very important to understand because Vivek Ramaswamy was playing the Trump card uh, and in fact amplifying it because he was doing it with an Ivy League education, but he failed to outperform or out Trump Trump. Uh, now, this is the kind of complex Republican primary field that we are in where you have Donald Trump, whose appeal seems unabated despite the 90 felony counts against him, multiple, multiple indictment cases uh, which have come in the last several months against him, which have only, it seems, given more ammunition to his followers to portray him as uh, the wronged one or some kind of a martyr. So we saw a very strong surge of support coming through. And you could see that DeSantis and Haley, uh, Nikki Haley, both uh, trailed by a considerable margin to Donald Trump. Now, his supporters uh, and his team had actually predicted a lesser range of victory for uh, Iowa, uh, for uh, last night. Uh, but we see this only amplifying now with even Vivek Ramaswamy's team right. moving into the Donald Trump camp. Right. Mr. Vickery, let's talk about Nikki Haley. She is the lone woman in the race on either side of the political spectrum. And she has often said that she is the only Republican candidate who can take on both Trump and Mr. Biden. What does this coming third in this uh, Iowa caucuses mean for her? Well, thanks very much for having me. I think it's bad news for Nikki Haley. Um, she has uh, staked out a position, particularly in international matters, uh, which is different from uh, Donald Trump. Uh, but it is plain that that's not selling among uh, the people who control uh, the Republican Party, and those are the MAGA Republicans, uh, the Trump people. So uh, she'll have another chance uh, in New Hampshire. New Hampshire is a much more moderate uh, state than Iowa, uh, and there is uh, some hope that she will be able to uh, right. maintain the uh, a candidacy there. But right now, this is bad news, and it's great news for Trump because both DeSantis and Haley uh, came in about even, which means they'll both stay in 
and they'll both split the uh, opposition to Trump. Right. Namrata, Vivek Ramsamy, you know, has dropped out of this 2024 presidential race, uh, and he has also endorsed Trump, like you were saying. Did you see this coming, or do you think that his campaign deflated because, you know, he also came under severe attack from both rivals and critics? Well, I think uh, Vivek Ramaswamy is an interesting story because he's uh, any he, he's he's actually Trump in a more sort of articulate way. But on the other hand, he is brown. He's an Indian American. He's a self-made uh, billionaire. He's uh, got uh, an appeal in the younger population. He's, he's aggressively used platforms like TikTok uh, to reach out to the younger generations, big on the college campuses. So it's an interesting mix. Uh, I do not think that everyone expected him to take this election and be uh, the sort of, uh, you know, stand in for Donald Trump himself. But he played the Donald Trump uh, MAGA, MAGA platform, in fact, even to a greater extent than many would argue Donald Trump himself. He's talked about cutting Federal Reserve by 90 percent. He's uh, talked about cutting the government by 80 percent. He's right. also given a lot of uh, attention to the fringe theories. Right. And, you know, the, the fact that January 6th uh, was an inside job. Uh, so all that really plays to Trump's base. And now coming in and endorsing Trump means that uh, in all likelihood, he'll get a position in the Trump administration if it so comes to place. You know, last year was a significant year for India-U.S. relations because we did see the Prime Minister on a state visit. We also saw G20 presidency and signing of very important uh, deals. So in case, uh, you know, Trump 2.0, what would that mean for India or Indian Americans or for that matter, India's foreign policy? Well, I think that uh, it uh, has to be remembered that in the United States, uh, both in uh, the Republican and Democratic Party, you have very strong bipartisan support for the U.S.-India relations. Uh, that's uh, the good news. That's not going to change uh, because the support is widespread in the Congress uh, and across the board. The bad news is, though, that uh, Trump is a uh, transactional uh, person. Uh, he believes uh, in quid pro quo. Unlike uh, the Biden administration, which has been all in on a Democratic partner in India, uh, Trump doesn't see the world that way. Uh, I doubt that he even knows where the Maldives right. are uh, and, and how important that is. So if you're looking uh, to a U.S.-India relationship, which is going to go to right. the next level uh, of building world peace uh, and fighting poverty around the world uh, with Trump, uh, that's kind of a non-starter. Right. Thank you, Mr. Vikri. Thank you, Namrata, for joining us on this debate. Time for a short break. More news and updates on the other side. Welcome back. As Ayodhya readies for the Ram Temple consecration ceremony, it spells a big boost for religious tourism and the hotel industry is booming in anticipation. OYO online booking portal is opening 400 new hotels, not only in Ayodhya, but also in other spiritual and religious pilgrimage sites of the country. Himanshu reports. As construction of the Ram Temple continues, hotels are being built as fast so they are ready to accommodate the rush of devotees over the next few months. OYO is opening 400 new hotels, not only in Ayodhya, but also in other spiritual and religious pilgrimage sites of the country in the next few months. These pilgrimage sites include Ayodhya, Puri, Shirdi, Varanasi, Amritsar, Tirupati, Haridwar, Vaishno Devi and Chardham. The budget hotel chain feels a spiritual tourism has grown rapidly in the last few years. According to Oyo, in Ayodhya alone, search for rooms on their app has gone up 350 times. That is why OYO has built 50 homestays in Ayodhya which have about 1,000 rooms. 
मैंने डोरमेट्री करी है दो सौ रुपये ढाई सौ रुपये एक बंदा के आराम से सोए कैटेगरी का टूरिस्ट भी तो आएगा ना ये तो है नहीं कि सफाई आएगा जो भी आएगा गरीब आदमी भी तो राम बोलता है ये तो है नहीं कि सिर्फ अरबपति करोड़पति राम बोलता है अर्लियर टूरिज्म डिड नॉट हैव मच कनेक्शन विद रिलीजन एंड स्पिरिचुअलिटी बट इन रिसेंट टाइम्स इम्पोर्टेंट सेंटर्स ऑफ रिलीजन एंड स्पिरिचुअलिटी हैव बिकम पीपल्स चॉइस फॉर टूरिज्म एंड दिस इज द मेन रीजन वाई होटल प्लेटफॉर्म लाइक ओयो are launching major hotel projects in important religious centers of the country in ayodhya with my colleague pramod shivastav and camera colleague pavan kumar himanshu shekhar for ndtv moving on the assam government has decided to confer the highest state civilian award assam babab on former chief justice of india ranjan gogoi this was informed by assam chief minister himanta biswa sharma today at a media co press conference uh, mr gogoi is the first judge from northeast india to hold the position of cgi it was during his tenure as the cgi of india that the supreme court had given verdict in the Ram Janma Bhoomi matter. Now, Mr. Gogoi is currently a member of the Rajya Sabha, having been nominated by President Ramnath Kovind in 2020. So that that was the judgment of the Supreme Court. But we we feel great that at least that judgment, that bench was presided by Assamese, and in the history of judiciary, no Assamese has ever been occupied that high office. so for people of assam ranjan gogoi will be a iconic figure for generations to come he will inspire all the uh, new generations to come Moving on for the first time ever Apple beat out Samsung to ship the most smartphones in the year according to IDC's worldwide quarterly mobile phone tracker although IDC has cautioned that its data is preliminary and subject to change its data says that Apple has uh, dethroned Samsung in the smartphone market now Apple has shipped most phones in 2023 IDC data says Apple's total mobile shipments is at 234 million versus uh, Samsung's 226 million Welcome back as Ayodhya readies for the Ram Temple consecration ceremony it spells a big boost for religious tourism and the hotel industry is booming in anticipation Oyo online booking portal is opening 400 new hotels not only in Ayodhya but also in other spiritual and religious pilgrimage sites of the country Himanshu reports As construction of the Ram Temple continues, hotels are being built as fast, so they are ready to accommodate the rush of devotees over the next few months. अच्छा है सर लोगों को रोजगार मिल रहा है, होटल बन रहा है, होटल बनना तो मेरे स्टाफ चाहिए, इसमें रोजगार भी मिल रहा है, और जरूरी है और आने वाले टाइम में कंटिन्यू बुकिंग भी अच्छी होगी, और इससे हम लोगों को ही फायदा मिल रहा है, फ़ Oyo is opening 400 new hotels not only in Ayodhya but also in other spiritual and religious pilgrimage sites of the country in the next few months. These pilgrimage sites include Ayodhya, Puri, Shirdi, Varanasi, Amritsar, Tirupati, Haridwar, Vaishno Devi and Char Dham. The budget hotel chain feels a spiritual tourism has grown rapidly in the last few years. According to Oyo, in Ayodhya alone, search for rooms on their app has gone up 350 times. That is why Oyo has built 50 homestays in Ayodhya, which have about 1,000 rooms. I have done dormitory, 200 rupees, 200 rupees. One person will sleep in the same category. The tourism will come, right? It will not come. 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 ये तो है नहीं कि सिर्फ अरबपति करोड़पति राम बोलता है अर्लियर टूरिज्म डिड नॉट हैव मच कनेक्शन विद रिलीजन एंड स्पिरिचुअलिटी बट इन रीसेंट टाइम्स इंपॉर्टेंट सेंटर्स ऑफ रिलीजन एंड स्पिरिचुअलिटी हैव बिकम पीपल्स चॉइस फॉर टूरिज्म एंड दिस इज द मेन रीजन व्हाई होटल प्लेटफॉर्म्स लाइक ओयो आर लॉन्चिंग मेजर होटल प्रोजेक्ट्स इन इंपॉर्टेंट रिलीजियस सेंटर्स ऑफ द कंट्री इन अयोध्या विद माय कलीग प्रमोद श्रीवास्तव एंड कैमरा कलीग पवन कुमार Himanshu Shekhar for NDTV. Moving on, in the light of the ongoing housing crisis, the Canada government is mulling reducing the intake of foreign students. 
The Immigration Minister of Canada, Mark Miller, has said that in the next few months, he will be looking towards reducing the number of international students in the country. Now, this has rung alarm bells among the students of Punjab and Haryana that sent thousands of students to Canada. Here's a ground report. Amid acute housing affordability crisis fueled by accommodation demand by foreign students, Canada is considering a cap on the number of international students allowed to live in the country. Well, I think we need to get our own house in order federally. Uh, we need to be doing our jobs in making sure that we have a system that actually makes sure people have a financial capability to come to Canada, that we're actually verifying offer letters, so really getting our... The housing crisis in Canada has hit the Indian immigrants as well, like Mr. Chandan Verdi from Punjab's Jalandhar district, whose brother recently moved to Canada. Recently, my brother is in Canada. Now, when we are looking for a house, there is a lot of rent. And they are finding jobs. They are not getting jobs. And if they are not getting jobs, they will not get their rent. If they are not getting their rent, they will not get their fees. So, there is a lot of difficulty. The current proposal of capping immigration has raised concerns in Punjab, which sends bulk of students to Canada every year. In 2022, 2,26,450 visas were approved by Canada under Refugees and Citizenship Canada or IRCC, and a significant portion, approximately 1.36 lakh students, hailed from Punjab. Around 3.4 lakh Punjabi students are currently studying in various educational institutions across Canada. Recently, Canada had also revised the cost of living requirement threshold for international students to 20,635 Canadian dollars, up from the earlier 10,000 Canadian dollars. The ever-changing rules are a big concern for prospective students planning to move to Canada. Major problems face करने पड़ जाएगी पहले तो मैंने Canada के लिए अपना पूरा plan तैयार कर लिया उसी के according हमने अपने course वगैरह choose कर लिया और साथ ही funds वगैरह भी उसके according तो मुझे सारी जो planning है वो scratch से choose करनी पड़ेगी and basically काफी disappointing होगा क्योंकि Canada जाने का मेरा हमेशा से एक सपना रहा है Immigration consultants and language training centers are also watching these developments closely. The student is very uncertain that there is no rule change. If there is a cap, they will not go to Canada. The other thing is the businesses, the education consultants, the IELTS institutes, where the children are ready, there is a lot of chances to get the chances. Canada is also watching these developments closely. With the recent changes in the immigration laws in Canada, it will be interesting to see if the number of students from Punjab who move to Canada declines. And will students from Punjab head for greener pastures in other countries? With Mohamed Ghazali, Pratibha Raman for NDTV. Moving on, the Assam government has decided to confer the highest state civilian award, Assam Bebab, on former Chief Justice of India, Ranjan Gogoi. This was informed by Assam Chief Minister Himanta Bishwas Sharma today at a media co press conference. Uh, Mr. Gogoi is the first judge from Northeast India to hold the position of CGI. It was during his tenure as the CGI of India that the Supreme Court had given verdict in the Ram Janmabhoomi matter. Now, Mr. Gogoi is currently a member of the Rajya Sabha, having been nominated by President Ramnath Kovind in 2020. So that that was the judgment of the Supreme Court. But we we feel great that at least that judgment, that bench was presided by Assamese, and in the history of judiciary, no Assamese has ever been occupied that high office. So for people of Assam, Ranjan Gogoi will be an iconic figure for generations to come. He will inspire all the uh, new generations to come. 
Moving on for the first time ever, Apple beat out Samsung to ship the most smartphones in the year according to IDC's worldwide quarterly mobile phone tracker. Although IDC has cautioned that its data is preliminary and subject to change, its data says that Apple has uh, dethroned Samsung in the smartphone market. Now, Apple has shipped most phones in 2023. IDC data says Apple's total mobile shipments is at 234 million versus uh, Samsung's 226 million.